Hi, I'm Pamela Poole, and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. Everywhere I look, there's inspiration, and I'm almost an inspiration overload all the time. I'm like you, though. I don't have that much time to carry out what I would like to do with that inspiration. But today is a studio day, and so I had a friend who suggested I do a live painting video, and I'm not sure that everyone understands. When I do a painting, there's a lot that goes into it before I ever start the painting process. I don't talk and paint well at the same time. That's two sides of my brain going, and I'm blonde, okay? So I do better if I focus on one or the other. So today, before I want to get the talking over with, and before I start um, any of the painting process, which will be another video, I want to explain to you what happens before I ever put paint on canvas. Behind me is a blue <coughs> canvas. It's already toned. It's what I call toning it. I put the paint on so that there's an underfeel that carries through to the whole painting. In this case, I'm trying to get the feel of an ocean breeze, the Atlantic Ocean, the vast sky that God has created. And the reason I am doing that is because I'm doing a painting of sailboats in the harbor at Southport, North Carolina. The blue in the background is going to match that really well. I will have to put clouds in. I'll put a horizon line where the water starts. Uh, a horizon line separates the sky from water or land. It's a very grounding influence, a peaceful, secure influence that a viewer in a painting likes to feel. So it's very important that I get that right. I will also be thinking in terms of what's called a rule of thirds. I will split this canvas up into three rows down, three rows across. I will end up with nine squares on this painting. And I will be marking them off with a white chalky type pencil. And then the reason I do that is because I'm gonna to want to find a focal point about right there, or right here, or right here, or right here. Somewhere, when I divide this off, I'm going to come up with four little focal areas, four little intersections of those lines. Those are ideal for putting a focal point. Sometimes a focal point works in the center. If you want to put a vase of flowers and if something just has to be in the middle and you can't figure out another way, then, then it is what it is. But if possible, if you off-center a focal point, you will have a lot more impact. It's a much better composition. So I'll be aiming for that. And another way that this works for me is you can see that I already have a focal point with the sailboat on this side. So I'm going to want to use this. If you want five stars for your focal point placement, you're going to put it up here because people read from right to left, uh, left to right, and they are going to want to look there first. So you work it out where it works out, but if possible, I do want to do a little something up in that area. Yes, artists are manipulating the viewer, but it's a good way. It's, it, it rewards the viewer. Um, if I do my job right, you will instantly see the focal point, and then you will want to move around the, the rest of the painting and come back to the focal point. Think of a focal point as the main character in a book. Sometimes you have maybe a main one and then someone almost as important beside of them and you make them interact and that sort of thing. But mainly, your um, focal point is your main character. The setting is the setting of your story, the stage for your story. So in a lot of ways, creativity branches across all different kinds of venues, music, writing, uh, crafts. A lot of design principles are going into a painting that are um, also true of other design uh, topics like designing furniture, balance, rhythm. Uh, there's so much that goes into this. I will be working with balance and rhythm with these sailboats to make sure that I get them right. Another thing I do is I use odd numbers. Um, I, the one, three, five, seven. There are eight sailboats in this painting and I will cut them down to seven. Um, because I like to use odd numbers. It's another little trick in composition. And I will be adding something else to this painting that is not 
in this particular picture. It's in another picture that I have. It's just off the angle of this one when I cropped it, but it is the Oak Island Lighthouse, and I want that in the background on Lo Oak Island in this painting. So another thing I'll have to be careful about with my focal point is I will use warmer colors, a brighter contrast. Um, I will do little things with that painting, that um, with that subject that will make you see it first instead of the other things. I will sort of kick back other sailboats and other, maybe the distant horizon line, the trees or something on the island by making them bluer, cooler, so I will be muting them. So yes, you see them, and when you, where eye travels around, you will enjoy them. But first, you will be looking at my focal point. A lot of people, tell, in thinking of the horizon line, a lot of people tell me, oh, you're an artist. You know, I can't even draw a straight line. And I am so glad I'm in good company because honey, I can't draw a straight line either. To do this horizon line in the background, I would have you doing this to try to see if it was right if it weren't for this real handy dandy ruler and a T-square, which I learned to use in my furniture design studies um, uh, when I was taking some drafting. This will help keep your lines straight so they don't start leaning, and this will help you keep that line across. I will keep my horizon line near the bottom third. Remember I told you I'm dividing into thirds. I will keep my horizon line in that bottom third um, to make this composition work. And I will use a ruler. No sweat about not being able to straw, draw a straight line. There aren't many straight lines in art, so uh, you're not off the hook. You, you really need to take a sketching course and just enjoy it. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about in my studio today. I will begin trying to work up a uh, sketch on this and try to get a, a painting video in for you to work with and we'll see what happens with this painting. It could work out great or I may have to paint over it and do something else. I don't worry about that because I paint for an audience of myself and the Lord. He's the one that gets all the glory. Um, he's the only one I'm trying to please and I don't worry about whether, whether other people like my art or not. It would be great if they did. But you know what? I'm going to have fun in the studio. I'm going to be inspired. I'm going to learn things. I'm going to listen to ambient spa music or movie soundtracks that are inspiring to me and motivating. And I'm just going to uh, grow myself as an artist in my skill and maybe with the thoughts that I'm going to be, you know, thinking through things that are going on, people I'm praying for. It's a good time to pray. And so I will be enjoying this time in the studio. So until next time, when I will help you out to see, I'll get some of this basic, meh, not so interesting stuff done. And then I will let you see some of the fun part where we put some paint on this canvas. Until next time, have a wonderful, creative life. Bye-bye.